Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. In this video, we are going to talk about logistic function, also known as sigmoid function, which appears a lot in statistical learning, machine learning, and deep learning. Therefore, the goal is to explain the shape and behavior of this function, including its derivative which actually has a close form or analytical form, which is extremely useful uh, in machine learning and deep learning. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe so others can find this video as well. Okay, so let's get started with the definition of logistic or sigmoid function. One of the most well-known forms of this function is, uh, which we show here by the sigma, of t where the t is input is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative t and as a reminder this e here is the famous constant in mathematics which is almost 2.7 on the right side we have the plot of e to the negative t as a function of t and as we can see this is a decreasing function of t therefore uh, for large negative values of t, this function goes to infinity, and then for large positive values of t, this function goes to uh, zero or converges to zero. So this will uh, allow us to better understand the shape of this sigmoid or logistic function. So now let's take a look at another form of this logistic or sigmoid function that you may find in some uh, places. Um, in this case, if you remember, we had 1 over 1 plus e to the negative t, and we can multiply both numerator and denominator by the same number because they cancel each other. And here we multiply both by e to the, uh, to the power of t. And in this case, if we do the multiplication, we get e to the t for the numerator, and then we get 1 plus e to the t in the denominator. And um, in this case, on the right side, we have now the plot of e to the t, or exponential of t, as a function of t, and we can see that this is an increasing function. Let's take a closer look at the behavior of the logistic or sigmoid function for the two extreme values of negative infinity and infinity. When we substitute t uh, to go to negative infinity, then if you look at the figure on the right side, uh, the value of e to the negative t goes to infinity, meaning that we have a very large number. And now this tells us that we get 1 over 1 plus a large number, and we know that this converges to 0. On the other hand, when t goes to infinity, if you look at the right side, the value of e to the negative t is very, very close to 0, and it's a small number. And in this case, we get 1 over 1 plus a small number, which is 1 over 1, and therefore the limit is 1. We could write this a little bit in a more uh, mathematical language, but here it gives you the basic idea of how to find these limits in a simple way. In fact, this is a very important property of the logistic or sigmoid function, because as you can see, this function is always between 0 and 1. To confirm this, we are going to plot uh, this function using uh, NumPy. Uh, and in order to do that, we are going to create a set of uh, real valued numbers from negative 5 to 5. Here we are using NumPy lat lin space, which gives us uh, linear space data points. And then we are going to uh, apply the sigmoid function, so that's 1 over 1 plus uh, exponential of negative t, and we're going to plot these values and connect them together, and you can see here that we have this logistic or sigmoid function on the right side. So as a function of t, this is increasing and goes from 0 to 1. That's exactly consistent with what we had in the previous slide. So what this means is that the domain of this logistic or sigmoid function is the set of all real valued numbers from negative infinity to infinity, but the range is always from 0 to 1. And this should be kind of familiar, because from probability and statistics, we know that probabilities of events are always 
between 0 and 1. So this means that we can interpret the output of the logistic or sigmoid function as a probability value or probability score. And this is, in fact, the reason that we have a very well-known method known as logistic regression, which is used for classification. So let's say we have a binary classification problem where we have two uh, sort of like events or two outcomes, which we show them by C0 and C1. So in this case, we can use the linear regression model, which is a linear combination of the input uh, feature, which here we assume that we only have a single input feature X. And then we can apply this to, or give this as input uh, to the logistic function. And this will, gives, uh, this will give us one over uh, one plus e to the negative t, where the t, the input of the logistic function, is the output of this uh, sort of like linear regression part. And this will, gives, this will give us the probability that the data point x uh, belongs to class uh, or outcome C1. And the nice thing is that in the binary case, we have two possible outcomes, C0 and C1. And again, the sum of the probabilities must equal one based on the axioms of probability, which means that if we have the probability that this data point X belongs to class C1, then the probability that it belongs to class C0 is one minus the other probability, right? Because the sum of the probabilities must equal one. So that's why logistic or sigmoid function, you can see it a lot also in statistical learning, right? So that's something that have been used for, for many, many years, and it's been very successful for classifying data points. Although we used uh, our own implementation of uh, logistic or sigmoid function in the previous slide when we wanted to have the plot of the logistic function you can also use this built-in function in python from the scipy library so uh, as you can see here from scipy.special we can import this expit um, and this is exactly the implementation of logistic function and just to show you here that we get the same results, now I'm again plotting this uh, logistic function using this built-in method. And also on the left side, you can see that I'm passing negative infinity, zero and infinity to this function to confirm that we get uh, correct values, right? So you can see that for negative infinity, we get zero. For uh, input zero, we get 0 0.5. And then when the input is infinity, we get one. And this is consistent with what we found earlier too uh, about the limits of this function, that as t goes to negative infinity, this function converges to zero. And when t goes to uh, plus infinity, this function converges to one. In this slide, we're gonna look at the derivative of logistic function. The derivative can be represented by this um, d over dt of the logistic function, or also the sigma prime of t. And as we will prove in the next slide, this has a very nice closed form expression, which is logistic function times one minus logistic function. This is extremely helpful because this means that you don't have to use other uh, sort of like, you know, numerical uh, methods to uh, estimate this derivative and you can actually find it exactly using this simple uh, formula. Uh, and in this figure that we have here, I have plotted both the logistic function and its derivative uh, at the same time. So you can see that the blue one is the logistic function that we had before. And then the red one is the uh, derivative of this function for different values of t you can see that at t equals zero, the derivative reaches its maximum value. And if you look at the actually the, the blue curve here, you can see that the, around t equals zero, this logistic function becomes um, almost a linear function. So that's the local approximation that we can have. And then as we go to t uh, negative infinity and infinity, meaning that very small numbers or the large values of this t value of t, uh, the derivative becomes almost zero, right? So this means that uh, this function uh, doesn't change very much anymore. And this is a very well-known problem in, in deep learning 
where uh, the input of the logistic function is far from the origin or zero, the derivatives become almost zero. Um, some people call this the uh, vanishing gradient problem. Uh, I'm going to discuss this more in detail in other uh, videos. But for now, what's uh, left here is to prove that actually the derivative of the logistic function has this uh, closed form formula. And you can see that to, to, to show this, we can um, write the, uh, in line one, we write the logistic function as one plus e to the negative t to the power of negative one. So that's equivalent to one over one plus e to the negative t. In the second line, we're going to use the chain rule. So you can, for example, call one plus e to the negative t uh, to be y. And then when you're finding the derivative of y to the negative one, so you get in this case, negative one, y to the power of negative two. And also you have to multiply this by the derivative of y with respect to t. So that's where we get this negative e to the negative t. And um, you know, in line two, we have two negative signs as constants. So those two cancel. Uh, and then we get e to the negative t and one plus e to the negative t to the power of two in the denominator. And now we can factor this in line four and write it as one over one plus e to the negative t times e to the negative t over one plus e to the negative t. The first term is exactly the definition of the logistic function that we had before. And it's very easy to show that the second term is actually one minus uh, the value of the logistic function at the point t. And this will uh, complete the proof that the derivative of the sigmoidal logistic function is the logistic function times one minus logistic function that we had in the previous slide. I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.